Load balancers, a fundamental piece of infrastructure that underpins scalable and reliable applications. Whether we're building web applications, APIs, or complex distributed systems, understanding how load balancers function is important. Let's dive into the basics together. At its core, a load balancer acts as a traffic director for our application's incoming requests. It's a hardware device or a software component that distributes network or application traffic across multiple servers to ensure that no single server becomes overwhelmed. This traffic distribution isn't just about avoiding overloads. It's about laying the groundwork for a more robust and efficient system. First, load balancing helps us distribute workload, preventing any single server from becoming a bottleneck and ensuring consistent performance. Second, load balancers enable us to scale our applications dynamically. We can add or remove resources as demand shifts. This ensures that our app remains responsive and stable during peaks and valleys of daily traffic. By intelligently distributing requests, load balancers reduce latencies and improve response times. Also, distributing requests across multiple servers enhances availability by providing redundancy and failover options. This means our applications remain accessible even if some servers experience issues. Now, let's consider the types of load balancers we'll encounter. We can categorize them in a few ways. Hardware load balancers are dedicated physical appliances known for their robust performance and stability, designed for high-demand enterprise environments in dedicated data centers. Software load balancers run on commodity hardware, offering greater flexibility and cost effectiveness, making them suitable for a wider range of applications. Cloud-based load balancers are managed services offered by cloud providers. This approach reduces operational overhead by shifting the management burden to the cloud provider. Load balancers can also be classified by the network layer at which they operate. Layer 4 load balancers operate at the transport layer. They primarily make routing decisions based on IP addresses, ports, and TCP or UDP connections. Because they don't inspect the content of the traffic, Layer 4 load balancers are faster and more efficient. They are good for basic load balancing tasks where content-based routing isn't required. Use Layer 4 for speed and simplicity. It's ideal for TCP traffic and basic load balancing needs. Layer 7 load balancers operate at the application layer, specifically with HTTP and HTTPS. This enables routing decisions based on the content of the traffic, such as HTTP headers, URLs, cookies, and other application-specific data. This makes Layer 7 ideal for complex applications that require content-based routing, such as directing users to different servers based on their requested URLs. Layer 7 load balancers can perform SSL termination at the load balancer itself, improving performance by offloading encryption and decryption from backend servers, and centralizing SSL certificate management and security policies. Use Layer 7 when you need content-based routing or advanced features like SSL termination. It gives you more control but requires more processing power. Finally, there are global server load balancers. These operate at a higher level, enabling traffic distribution across multiple geographic locations. This is useful for applications with a global user base that require low latency access and increased resilience. GSLBs consider factors like user proximity to data centers and the overall health of backend infrastructure across the globe. They can use DNS-based routing or any cast networking to direct users to the nearest available data center and provide failover across regions to ensure high availability. GSLBs aren't just for large corporations. They're essential for any application that needs to provide consistent service and performance to users worldwide. How do load balancers actually distribute traffic? It depends on the chosen algorithm, and selecting the right one can significantly impact efficiency. Round robin is the simplest method. It sequentially distributes requests across available servers, rotating through them in a loop. Sticky round robin ties a client to a specific server by creating a session ID, usually via a cookie or using a client's IP address. Once this sticky session is created, all requests from the client go to the same server. Helpful for applications that rely on server-side session data, though this can make scaling more complex. Weighted round-robin involves assigning weights to each server, 
allowing a load balancer to send a proportionally higher number of requests to more capable servers and fewer requests to those with limited resources. This increases overall system performance and utilization. IP URL hashing takes a different approach to consistent routing than sticky sessions. Instead of tracking session state, it uses a hash function that will always route the same IP or URL to the same server. This stateless approach is particularly useful for caching static content. Least connections directs traffic to the server with the fewest active connections at any given time, ensuring a more evenly distributed load. A similar algorithm, least time, routes requests to the fastest or most responsive server, ensuring a more responsive user experience and reduced latency. Load balancers provide vital metrics for monitoring system health and performance. Traffic metrics provide insight into traffic volumes through request rates and total connections. Performance metrics such as response time, latency, and throughput help us evaluate user experience. Health metrics, including server health checks and their failure rates, alert us to backend server issues. Finally, error metrics like HTTP error rates and drop connections help us identify potential connectivity problems. Together, these metrics give us a comprehensive view of our system's health and availability. If you like our video, you may like our system design newsletter as well. It covers topics and trends in large-scale system design, trusted by 1 million readers. Subscribe at blog.bytebygo.com.